Houston, we have a problem. I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be like that. <clears throat> yeah, I'm no expert, but I think there's something leaking. So the machine was like working fine, but when I was trying to remove the last rock, I noticed that the hydraulics kind of got really slow immediately i shut the machine off because thinking that it's probably low on fluids or something like that you know, running hydraulic pumps dry is not that good of an idea Something seriously failed, that's for sure. Oh my... Okay. What? What is this? At first, first glance, I didn't see anything broken. What? Is the hydraulic motor moving? How is that possible? Check it out. The hydraulic motor is moving. It might just be an easy fix. But how the hell did this happen? So that's kind of weird. completely loose hopefully the seal is not busted apparently I don't have the coupler to make this connect to this how is that possible whatever let's uh, make our own mm, this should work Anyway, I'm gonna add some fluids to this, see if it leaks or not. No leaks so far. Okay, I'm pretty sure the seal is gone. Yeah, this requires some extra time. So I'm thinking I'm gonna finish this project off, then deal with the uh, pocket. I don't really need this 
Bobcat right now. Okay, well, as you saw, the thing broke in middle of the project when I was working on the carport area, lost all of its hydraulic fluid, and I pretty much just parked the thing here. I did disconnect the gauge drain line because the motor was still leaking and I didn't really want to lose all the fluid. So pretty much I need to take the motor off, see what's going on, if it's just a simple seal or there's something else to it. I would definitely want to park the thing there, but I'm not really sure if I have enough clearance to fully open uh, this hatch. Definitely not. Eat about this much more. Mm, okay. Well, actually, I don't really need to do anything here. The problem is that I need to rise the case drain line higher than the hydraulic reservoir is. Because other than that, the case drain line will just completely drain the hydraulic tank. Gonna leave the thing on like that for now. Gonna go get a hydraulic plug for this thing. That way I wouldn't need to raise the cabin up and then I can park it there and start working on the thing. Yeah, that sounds like a plan, let's do that. So option number one would be this, but I'm not sure if this will completely work because the tip is not uh, cone shaped. It's supposed to be something like this. So this might not work. Another option came from a friend of a friend, this type of plug. Now this one will connect to the coupler itself, not the hose. And as you tighten this thing up, it will close itself off completely. So if this fails, uh, then let's try this one. This might be Still leaking. Option number B it is. Gonna leave it there for 20 minutes, see if it leaks. Yeah, this seems to be working. So before I actually hook it up to the motor, let's uh, check out the gauge drain filter. like playing operation. Actually, it looks pretty clean. That's a relief. It looks pretty clean down there as well. Reassemble the thing before it drops on this sandy floor. Not sure what the torque should be on this. Let's just kind of eyeball it. Gonna put this back now and hook it up to the motor. After which try to drive the thing 
on the concrete pad where I can start actually working on it. I'm gonna put the camera here like this. Hopefully you guys will see something. And I do hope I don't break my camera. Mostly seems like um, it's coming from the top. Two different size nuts on one wheel. Okay. Wait, um, was I turning the right way? Lefty loosey, righty tighty. <laughs> Leverage two million. Beat the trick. Next time should start with this. Come on, man. Why are you making me sound like Joe Biden? To be honest, I think I only need to remove one tire. Why did I want to remove both? Now these don't really need the plug because not a lot of fluid will come from them. Only when the pump is running. Only one reason you would need a block here is to make sure you don't get any contaminants in there. So I've labeled it the green zip tie hose goes to the top port. If you do it the other way around, then your hydraulics will be reversed. Check it out. 13 millimeter socket. Kinda feels loose. Yeah. 12 millimeter. Does not even fit here. 
I'm guessing it's like 12.5 maybe. Thanks Bobcat for making unique bolts. What a bunch of clowns. Douchebag bolt made by Bobcat. And now there's that guy. Okay. See what's what. Seems like a seal. Definitely a mangled seal there. I mean, it's not broken, but it's kind of bent up. I mean, it's okay, 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 not so okay. Crap, 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 crap. Okay, 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 okay. This seal is definitely overstretched. But the motor itself looks fine though. You know, right now it's kind of weird. It doesn't go beyond the center in uh, that, that way, but right against the wall that way. I'm not sure if that's normal or not. Maybe you guys have some ideas here. Wait a minute, guys. I recall that um, when I changed the seals on this motor because it was broken or was it the other one? Hell if I remember. Anyway, I bought a seal kit that fits this motor but I did not use all those seals. Maybe I have some left and maybe one of them is this one. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try to find that seal kit. It should be around here somewhere. Pretty sure it's supposed to be... Somewhere here. Nope. These freaking Soviet boxes don't wanna really open. Very well. Oh, there we go. Oh, never mind. What a piece of crap! Pretty sure that's not how it's supposed to open. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is it. I'm already losing seals. Okay, let's go check it out. I don't think so. Too small. Yeah, I don't think so. It's a bit smaller, but not quite right. Yeah, it's too small for that gap. But the size actually seems right. I don't think that's right. Okay, whatever. I don't think I have it. Anyway, I need a replacement seal for this. I will see what I can come up with. It took me a while, but I did finally manage to find 
the correct seal for it. Already they got surface rust here. It's only been like two weeks by now. Gotta make sure the seal surface is nice and clean. You know, I think I'm pretty lucky that I did not damage the motor when it came loose from the frame. I'm pretty sure it's not very healthy for the motor to kind of wiggle all over the place when in motion. But luckily the drive shaft has tons of play in it, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. This part is always somewhat tricky. I wish they made this access hole a bit bigger. I guess that's why they call this a compact loader. Everything is compact. Manual also says each time you unmount the dry motor you also need to change out the face seals on the main hoses. But since when do I read manuals? The manual also says to torque these bolts to about well anything between 122 up to 136 newtons is fine if you ask me though that amount of torque for this tiny bolt seems seems a bit much but what do i know apparently nothing so last time i recall I torqued these things up to about 120 and it came loose anyway. So this time let's go a bit higher, 135. Literally gonna feel like I'm gonna break something. Seems excessive amounts of torque. There is some kind of a leak there as well, no idea where, but uh, that seems pretty small. And the cylinder in front is still leaking. I would say about the same, but still quite a lot. I think I need to sort that out soon. So if you don't know, this cylinder has a dent in here and that has destroyed the seals. Probably looking at a very expensive fix, guessing about 500 bucks or so. I mean, in my defense, I'm kind of broke. So, yeah.
So I'm actually missing a couple of knots. Don't really have spare, but maybe I can make them. Just need to know the right thread. Mm. 13 millimeters. Got M14 here, which is 12 millimeters. Definitely not enough. I need to go down M12. That should do the trick. So the easiest way to really clarify what kind of thread this is, is something that Andrew Camarata kind of taught us, I guess. Take a thread drill and just, and just try to match it up with the threads on the bolt. If it nicely matches up, then it's the right thread. So this is what? M14, 1.5. This setup is in metric, by the way, so so M14 is the size of the nut and 1.5 millimeters is, uh, is the thread. I have no clue how many miles that is, but if I can somehow figure it out, then I will post it somewhere here. Ow, ow, ow. Now when making threads, try to take your time and go back and forth a lot because these thread drills, they are incredibly strong but, but at the same time they are very pretty. That basically means if you Turn it too hard. It will basically just uh, shatter and break. Especially if they're made out of Chinesium alloys. And sometimes you can just turn it out and go again. It does help somewhat. But yeah, main thing to take away from making threads is patience. And a lot of it. If you're wondering why I don't just go and buy a new nut. Well, considering only place I could get it is from a Popcap dealership, they will most likely ask for an arm and leg for it. So, yeah, I'd rather do this. Yeah, it looks pretty good, I guess. Well, what do you know? Actually works. I think this is fine. So I'm gonna make one more and then uh, maybe this wheel won't come off. That should do it. Better than nothing. This uh, rim is pretty interesting now it literally has three different size nuts holding the tire to the machine anyway guys um, next up would be to test the thing but considering the dry motor came loose after two years of use i'm just in case gonna check the other side as well Oh, 
No, that one was okay. That was right. I don't know what to tell you guys. This one is nicely tight. I don't know what to tell you guys. I torqued them both up to the same specs two years ago. And I don't know how this one just came loose. I'm guessing vibration, but it's kind of strange. Well, I'm just shy below the minimal. I think uh, I should be fine for just testing purposes. Ah, that smells like vomit. Should have cleaned out the area before installing the motor. What a dumbass. Sometimes I do stupid stuff, but realize that a bit later. <laughs> Backfill here, then I carry it to the cabin. <laughs> then again, pressure washing this thing with an open drive drain. Probably not the best idea. It literally smells like poo. I'm not even kidding you. Ah, the smell. It's so bad, wow. It's like vomit mixed with crap, mixed with oil, mixed with sand. Yeah. What? And I thought I'm gonna have a clean glove. Boy, was I wrong. We got the other side pretty nicely cleaned up. Also, I found the drain hole. It's supposed to be down there somewhere. Somewhere here. Either that is a homemade drain hole. Or this one has been welded shut because I can't feel any hole here. Never mind. <laughs> never mind, never mind. Yeah, now we're docking. Yeah, it's a bit better. Looks like somebody took a big pile of doo doo. At, at least now I can see when there is an oil leak before the reservoir just runs dry. But anyway, before I put this thing back into service, let's do some work with it. So actually I do have a job lined up for this thing. 
If you remember when I was working on the carport upgrade, I removed a bunch of topsoil from here and I dumped it in front of the cabin to kind of help with the grass situation. Apparently grass doesn't really want to grow in uh, rocky sand. Yeah, so I'm gonna smooth out this pile of topsoil and mostly I'm gonna layer it because right now the decking surface area is slightly lower than this surface. So if it drains, all the water will just drain under the deck. I mean, if it drains heavily. So yeah, let's see if the bobcat is up for this task. Definitely looks better, I would say. Oh yeah, the star of this video. Mm, let's check it out if it's leaking or not now. Mm, this seems fine. Yep, fine. I consider this an absolute win. I mean the $2 fix that I did here. But anyway guys, got this thing back in working condition. So let's get back to work. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.